Hey, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Let's go check out our next story. Hello, I'm Miguel McKelvey, the co-founder and chief creative officer at WeWork, and you're watching Behind the Brand. Miguel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. This is an incredible place. We're uh, in the heart of New York, in your headquarters in Chelsea. The vibe is amazing. Um, I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? <laughs> um, that's a great question. You know, a lot of where we came from had to do with just being ourselves and trying to, you know, find our sort of superhero within and, and then use that ability to um, achieve uh, what, what was our sort of best purpose. And I think um, Adam and I were both entrepreneurs. We both were doing other things and um, we sort of uncovered something that we believed was a big problem um, for people and we, that we thought we could solve and uh, started very simply as sort of a side project as many things do. And it, um, the ball started rolling and here we are today. How'd you guys meet? Um, so Adam's a uh, roommate was one of my coworkers at an architecture firm that I was working for. And so it was very much one of those, you know, just serendipitous, by the way, I went over there one day to hang out and he happened to be there and we started talking and, you know, for whatever reason, we just had a connection. It was like no, no clear reason for it, but just one of those people that as soon as you engage, you find uh, a reason to continue the conversation and it just um, sort of, you know, um, like, I think that we knew that we were quite different and therefore perhaps there was something that we complimented each other and we could both see that, not that we ever said it out loud, but, uh, but it felt that way at the time. Can you identify, like, you're the yin, he's the yang? I mean, like, what are some of yeah, the complementary? I mean, so I'm West Coast, chill, like, very much focused on sort of design and, like, culture and sort of, like, um, things that are going on in the world and like, you know, what's the latest trend, that kind of thing. Um, and he's much more, you know, he's Israeli, he's very outspoken, he has tons of energy, he's kind of like, at least at the time, he, he was much more sort of bouncing off the walls with, um, with energy. And so uh, I think just in that regard, I was attracted and interested in him because he was bringing energy to the room and perhaps for him, I could be a calming element in some way, or at least someone who um, could, could hear and listen and take in some of that energy that he had and reflect it back at him in an interesting way. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people watch this show and this series because there's a lot of business lessons to be learned, you know. Here we are on this bustling, you know, headquarters. You have how many people here now? Um, just within headquarters, I mean, I think we're approaching 900 or so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing. Uh, so I want to underscore maybe a couple of lessons that I'm hearing already. It's like, you know, when people are thinking about putting together a team or even choosing a partnership or, you know, co-founders when they work together, I think what you said is really important. You guys have complementary skills. Uh, maybe there's some overlap. You guys definitely are on the same page in terms of vision. But like you, you know, he's he he does this well. You do that well. And and also you talked about you being the the calming effect, but him kind of bringing the heat. Uh, it's a good combination. Yeah. Well, I think there's definitely something important in that, which is that if you're you know, if you're always comfortable, that may not be the right direction to go because then you're not being challenged. And so I think the thing that we decided very early on was that we were always going to come to a point of agreement. Like we were, we sort of said, no matter what happens, we're going to sort of stay in the room until we agree. And, but, but we knew that there would be conflict because we both came from such different perspectives. And so, um, I think we were both comfortable with being uncomfortable and that's that's an important thing because like if you're a person who like has a you know type a mindset or something you're like i always have to get my way you know i can't i'm not willing to listen to someone else you know you should know that that's going to be tough for you to to be in a partnership you know and so um and you wouldn't want to perhaps um become partners with someone who's constantly challenging you because then you're going to be annoyed and angry all the time right so you need to know enough about yourself in order to put yourself in, into the right situation because you know business is a relationship just like a marriage or a friendship or whatever it has a bunch of complex characteristics that um, require you to you know be able to handle a bunch of tough situations I love that advice um, let's let's take that into now you know building a team you know you're building on all these different properties all these different locations you guys are going in lots of different directions um, and cultures cultures everything right um, 
how are you how are you driving culture how are you curating it and cultivating it nurturing it and helping it to go everywhere well it's interesting for a long time when we kind of were all in the same room uh, not literally but it was sort of small enough that we felt like our energy could sort of flow amongst each other without much structure without much effort um, it didn't seem like it was it needed that much attention while there were certainly challenges um, it at least felt like it was authentic because it just was what it was and everyone could feel it and um, and we all just were creating it together you know each day um, now that there are so many departments we're distributed across the world we're you know in some ways we're doing an incredible uh, set of diverse things meaning like we have an architecture interior design department they're obviously completely different than the legal department or the finance or you know IT and each one of those um, in some ways are their own thing and they have their own internal cultures so now we are doing a lot more to think about the culture at a higher level and say how are we cultivating it? And it comes with you know a bunch of different things like communication, for example, seems simple. We've realized that we have a whole bunch of communication channels that um, without management can um, get out of control, for example. So now we think about that more proactively. You know? So just sort of different ways of seeing what are the, the influence points, what are the points that really inject um, uh, sort of energy and how do we affect those and manage them. Yeah, let's talk about some of the missteps because, you know, we talked earlier off camera, I just recently did a Facebook Live, we talked about the F word, failure, um, which I think gets a lot of people stuck. Um, let's unpack that a little bit and talk about how you see failure and then maybe also talk about your definition of success. Well, failure is always interesting to talk about in the sense that for some people it seems like a finish line and for other people it's a point to spring forward from. I think once you get to the place where you're um, comfortable feeling that it's a place that you are always going to come back from, that you're going to, the, 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 the lowest point means you're only on your way up after that. You know, if you have that perspective then um, you, you know, it takes away a lot of the fear. And I think, like for me, you know, when I moved to New York City, um, I, I, I felt like I was taking a big leap. And I said to myself, look, the worst thing that can happen is none of it works out. And I moved back home with my mom and like, you know, um, s sit there until I figure out the next step forward. And I was totally comfortable with that if that's the way things worked out. So I was willing to sort of do um, take any chance, take any risk, because the downside um, would never be so bad that I wouldn't be able to spring back from it. And I think um, that's the perspective you need to have in order to constantly take risk. And you obviously can't achieve great success without taking those risks. So you've got to have the freedom. You've got to have the ability to like leap forward and not worry about the consequences. It's an important point you make too. Is again kind of subtle. I want to underscore it. Is you know, failure is fine if, if you can come back and fight another day. But like, failure is no fun and it's permanent if you fail too far and you can't come back. You know, if you're like, all right, I'm gonna try flying this plane in a different way that has never been flown and you do a tailspin into the ground, that's not, you don't get a second chance. You're talking about the kind of failure that is not gonna, I mean, you just said, you kind of played it out in your mind. The worst thing that could happen is it doesn't work out, I'm back with mom. And that's fine, you netted it all out. But like sometimes when you net it out and you're like, I'm going to take my life savings and I'm going to invest in this company and either works or doesn't. That's kind of a, you know, that's another kind of gamble, isn't it? Well, yeah, but, well, it just depends. I mean, we invested our life savings in this business. You know, we had a chance to, we, we sold a, a business before and we had a couple million dollars we could have put in our pockets and said, hey, that's uh, for the future. We'll have some money in the bank and we can have some freedom. Um, and perhaps if we get regular jobs, we'll have nice fat savings accounts or whatever, right? But instead we said, we're gonna leverage all of it. We're gonna put it all on the line. We're gonna invest all of it in a new business and then, you know, see where it takes us. And I think, I mean, it's, it's all about perspective. And certainly when you're younger and you don't have, say, family, that is depending on you, um, you it's, it's easier. And what, once you, you know, you gotta like take care of a kid or something, that changes somewhat. Um, and you gotta be responsible. But at the same time, 
um, it, if you have internally this burning need to do something, to, to push yourself, um, you're also doing yourself a disservice by not serving that need, by, by, by being too worried about it, because then you're not following your true path. And, and that's not right for you either. I mean, that's got to be doing some damage to your psyche if like every day something's telling you, take action, move forward, do something, and instead you're just checking a box or punching a time card or whatever. Yeah. So you do get this 30,000 foot view of entrepreneurs, you know, these dynamic workspaces, you know, in each WeWork office, there's everything from hot desks to single offices to large, you know, you can have an ad agency take up a large uh, piece of real estate. What are you seeing from your vantage point that's getting people stuck? You know, we talked about fear, but what else are you seeing out there? That's a great question. I mean, we're in an environment that is pretty, you know, it's a bubble that um, is full of a lot of successes. And I think we, we get to feel a lot of positive energy that comes from um, being surrounded by people that are uh, generally successful. And we don't, we also don't, it's not like people are often sharing their their challenges with us. You know, there's not a mechanism for that. But I do, one of the things of having personal relationship with some members is that we do see sometimes where um, think great people still face challenges. You know, like there are times very literally where, um, you know, there's a delay in manufacturing for a product. If you don't have a product, you can't sell it. If you can't sell it, you don't have money and then you can't pay the rent, you know? And those things come across um, our plate because we do have a personal relationship with our members and we do want to figure out how to support them. And so those are very challenging things. And you know, as you build a business, it's, 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 it's hard to remain personal as well as you know, um, uh, sort of have a business relationship. And we walk that line very carefully. We've had some great examples where um, you know, we've had some people who have failed and our team has, has um, then help point them towards new opportunities. That could be someone who gets a job at another company or two small companies that perhaps join forces, you know, or help each other out to find other opportunities. So, um, you know, I think our perspective would hopefully be that nobody is stuck, that we can always help someone sort of keep moving down that path on the journey. Yeah, well, maybe I, from an outside observer, you know, you're not paying us to do this. This is not a paid advertisement or endorsement. We're just kind of telling it like it is. And the way I see it is, even though you're, you know, you're talking about brick and mortar, you're talking about architecture, you're talking about people, culture. I mean, I think what we're really talking about here is UX and UI. And it seems like you guys have got a really good handle on that. And maybe we can unpack that a little bit, how you see user interface, user experience, because I see you guys, I mean, in my mind, the comparison is you're kind of like a Google or a YouTube. Like, you guys are the facilitators to these amazing creators that come and make stuff within your walls, right? And so I see stuff like, you know, beer on tap or this, you know, blurring of the lines between having to go home and stay here and work. It's like you guys have made it so easy to have this, well, in community, it's, it's a buzzword, but we can't overstate it. Like that's what, to me, WeWork is all about. And even your, your tagline, your slogan is better together, right? Um, talk about that a little bit. Well, I think you touched on a lot of interesting things there. I think um, one of the things that we identified early on is that the environment is really impactful to people's, you know, mood, psyche, um, happiness. And we felt like if we could just um, impact people in a positive way, because many times workspace is thought of as a very negative impact. Like people walk into the door of work and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to endure this for eight hours or 10, 10 hours, right? So if we could flip that and be like, wow, this is a super cool place to walk into. I feel happy, I feel excited to be here. That just that change would be pretty profound. And so um, that leads to a lot of our design intent and a lot of the time when we're trying to, I mean, you gotta think like when we started, the idea of being really um, interested and uh, invested in your employees environment was still limited a lot in a lot of ways to like the Googles and sort of really the Googles of the world, right? Like 
you know, they're one of the few that was like, hey, let's make this place that's all about our employees and it'll you know cater to their every need and of course there were other tech companies sort of doing that but it wasn't widespread at all and so we've um i think we've played a part in that uh, evolution where many more companies you know in all industries are sort of looking at that and saying like wow let's actually think about you know our our team members and how they're impacted so um so uh, you know i think that there's many levels right so you can say there's the physical space and there's uh, the, the, the ways that are just sort of environmental, interior design, colors, materials, et cetera. Then there's functional components that are supportive to different use cases and needs. And then there is the community. There's that layering of, of humans and their interaction with each other. And all those things work together to hopefully be empowering and, and um, uplifting and sort of uh, engaging. And you're taking it to the next level too. You have this thing called summer camp. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so summer camp, I mean, there is one thing to make an amazing office space where people are really happy um, is great. But part of our culture has also been to um, get out of the office and to have really great parties and to help people engage on multiple levels. So, you know, the social component really from the beginning was, was important to us. And so one of the things that we realized being from New York City that, you know, in the summer, there is a group of people who get to go out, you know, to the beach for the summer and they get to take advantage of some of these things that are um, in some ways reserved for the privilege. Um, and we felt like if we could take some of these hustlers, our members who, you know, are working nonstop and give them the opportunity to get out of the city, to be in a new environment, to be in nature, that they would really enjoy that, that it would be next level for them. And so um, summer camp is literally a kid's summer camp. Uh, they're there all summer. The following weekend, we keep all the staff. Um, we do, uh, we bring our uh, members in. Last year, it was uh, about 3,000 or more. And they take part in all the activities, you know, from the ropes course, to the sailing, to the canoeing, to the soccer, to the basketball, to the, um, you know, the campfires, all that stuff. And you add to that basically a music festival and a bunch of inspirational speakers and stuff. So it comes together to be a pretty extraordinary experience and one where people hopefully can build bonds that go beyond the professional and more into that, you know, social and, um, and, and, and in many ways, we hear things that people feel like they're making, you know, friends that will be friends for life just in that weekend. Yeah, I think you know, there's a term, uh, I didn't invent it, but, you know, connecting versus collecting, you know, so like if you go get office space somewhere else, you feel like it's a landlord kind of, you know, relationship, they collect your money, you know, they're collecting tenants, you know, we're at capacity, fine, we don't care about you after that. Um, we work really seems to be connecting people, you've got you know, like an intranet, you've got an app, right, where people can find each other, talk to each other, connect, not just like in your geographic area, but, you know, across the world. And then you're doing all these other things, you know, the, the summer camps and, and these fireside chats or these meetups, you've got events going on all the time, yeah? Well, the interesting thing is that selfishly, as the owners, the operators of WeWork, we want people to be deeply connected because then they're more likely to stay engaged with us and they want to remain a part of the community if they rely upon it. So it's interesting that, you know, it's actually a bit from a business perspective, it's in our interest to help people connect with each other. Um, and that's, that's, that's really cool because it um, means that we're constantly working at different ways that we can do that effectively. Um, the member network is one of those things where it's a constant evolution. Like it's start, it's had many different uh, sort of incarnations in terms of what are the use cases as the community has grown you know new ones flourish and so there's you know marketplace component somewhat where you know there's people who are actually getting uh, lots of um, both people searching out companies that can help them as well as people who are looking for work and that connection is happening many small practical things you see really cool stuff when you you know see someone who needs an immediate answer and it could be something like you know, I need to know something about IP law or like, should I file a trademark? And like, if you had to like go to a lawyer and deal with like the, am I billing and not billing? And is this the right lawyer and all that? But if you can just like meet someone who's down the hall, who just experienced that like a couple of months ago, that's incredibly empowering. And that's what we're trying to create is this, you know, this place like ecosystem of sort of information and connection that you can access at many different levels depending on, on what you need. Yeah, and the aesthetic 
tells that story too. There's windows everywhere, everything's open, but private, you know, where you need it. Um, but it's very collaborative and instead of, you know, walled gardens or closed doors and you can't see anything, it's open and you encourage people to interact. I also don't want to like paint it all rosy and like it's awesome all the time. Like the struggle is real, right? And I'm sure it is with you guys too. Um, you know, for if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you know, you're in a street fight every single day. Um, what advice do you have for startups? You know, it's a great question because um, the evolution as a company, we've sort of tried to remain a startup. We still use that word as much as we can because we do think that there's something great about that time, that the struggle is like, the struggle being real is something we don't want to forget. You know, not only because our members are still experiencing it every day, but because the response that you have when you're under, when you're under that um, struggle, the energy is much different than mature companies. Yeah, it's, like, it's the Rocky Balboa element. It's the I'm still hungry, you know, you're still raw, you still feel like you're learning, you don't get complacent or you don't buy that you know, expensive car or fancy jacket or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, if that's what you like, if that's the part of it that you enjoy, and I don't know that that's why all people start companies. Like many people may want to get away from that part and have like some smoother lifestyle. Their dream may be to like, you know, work for four hours a day or whatever. And if that's what you want, then you should create that life for yourself through your entrepreneurial journey. But for us, we actually enjoy it. Like we really love that feeling of being super engaged. And so we continually push the limits in order to retain th that spirit, that energy. So, I mean, from a business perspective, for example, you can make an argument that like, there's no reason for us to have entered China. Like we could have waited until next year or the year after that, we would have been fine from, from a business perspective. But from the standpoint of what we think it does for us as a culture to, to, to take on that kind of challenge, to be willing to make a leap, to have to learn you know, a, a whole bunch of complicated um, things that you know, are, are forcing us to engage deeply, you know, to, to, to really push um, and not just sort of say, well, we figured it out, let's just roll it out, you know? Like that to us is something that would just be lame and a failure and so we, we went away from that. We go the other direction, was like, let's take the harder road. Let's, um, you know, let's continue to, uh, to find the ways that we continue that growth path. Yeah, I think there's a poem about that, right? That road less traveled made all the difference. And also it's a common theme. I've talked to hundreds of entrepreneurs and almost all of them have said the exact same thing. It's, it's never about the destination. It's always about loving the process. Gary Vee would say, I love the chopping instead of you know, having the tree come down itself. It's like, I love being in that fight mode, in that you know, hustle mode or that staying hungry. Um, maybe impart uh, some wisdom, you know, give us some advice and maybe talk to your 19 year old self. A lot of people who are watching this are, are young people, you know, just whether they're in school or just getting out of school, but what would you tell someone who's just finishing up high school, maybe going into college, thinking about starting a business or thinking about a career path, like do I take the slow and steady route? Do I take the entrepreneur route? If they're feeling like they've got the chops to be an entrepreneur, like they're okay with instability, insecurity, and all these other things that come with the job, what would you say? I think, you know, finding a way that you feel like you're growing as fast as you possibly can, taking the opportunities where you see personal growth. And in some ways it's gonna be selfish when you're young because you have to think, how am I gaining the most for the, from this opportunity? Perhaps more so than the company is even gaining from my contribution. Um, you know, you need to, as a young person, you have to be looking at um, your own leverage and your leverage as a young person is that you're free, you can work incredibly hard, you have, mu you know, your limitations with other structures uh, may be less. And so therefore you should be using that time to absorb as much as you possibly can, to take on as many challenges as you can, to be the one who always does um, whatever extra means. Like if, if extra in your environment means you're going to you know, stick around later at night and, or, and you're going to fix the leaky sink like I did in my first job in New York, or you're going to build some bookshelves because all the books in the architecture firm are piled up on the desks and they're in the way, 
you know, you do that because that's going to be the moment at which you get recognized because you were willing to, to, to push further. Or, you know, it's like when the opportunity comes and someone says, no one else is available to do this, even if you have no clue, you are willing to just say, I'll jump in and learn. I'll, I'll whatever, get on the internet and figure out how to solve that problem. You know, all, each one of those things are, you got to be the kind of person who's willing to take the risk in order to gain the experience, in order to learn. And then it's always going to, you know, pay off in the future. And you're doing that not because you want your boss to think, oh, wow, good job. You're doing it because you know you're going to benefit from that experience and you're going to use that in the future.